Hi friends, it's Aubrey. Today I was going to do the Trader Joe's video that you guys voted on on the community tab where I was going to do cooking for my family from Trader Joe's for $50 for the week. But then I looked in my fridge, freezer, and pantry and we have enough food already. And since I want to be a good steward of what we have and not waste anything, I decided this week we would just eat from the pantry and then we'll postpone that video for a couple weeks from now. So if you are interested in that one, definitely hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. Now let's get into the pantry cooking video. We're having Thai peanut beef for dinner tonight. Here are the ingredients and I have some rice cooking. Let's get the meat browning and the sauce made. Heating up some oil over medium heat in my cast iron or enameled cast iron. I'll have this link down below. It's an Amazon Basics one. I really, really, really like it. So I'll have that linked in case you're interested in it. Just dumped my meat in. I thawed this over the last like day or so in the fridge. This was from the meat that I got a couple of weeks ago. Um, it was in last week's or in last month's grocery haul. If you're interested to see how I got it for basically pennies. I will link that video here for you. I added some salt and pepper and I'm just gonna let this cook, stirring it occasionally until, until all the sides are brown. Gonna get a half cup of creamy peanut butter. This is one that I used for my extreme budget challenge a while back. I'll go ahead and have that linked in case you haven't seen it yet. I'm just going to try and finish. finish this one off. Next, we're going to add two teaspoons of soy sauce. And I've never made this recipe before. I'll have the one I'm following down below. Next, we're going to do just a teaspoon of sriracha. I'm kind of a spice wimp and the recipe calls for two, but I'm worried it'll be too spicy if we add both. The recipe doesn't call for it, but I feel like it needs some garlic, so we're gonna add about a teaspoon. And the last thing we'll add is a tablespoon of brown sugar. We're gonna add just a couple tablespoons of water to this until it's at like a good sauce consistency. I ended up adding three tablespoons of water and I think, see that, that'll be nice saucy consistency and we'll go ahead and add that to the beef. Make sure to scrape this out as well so we get all of the sauce. We're just gonna add a little bit at a time and stir this around. The peanut butter will melt and all the flavors will kind of meld together. I know this looks odd, but trust me, it's going to be delicious. I'm just going to let this kind of heat through and then we'll pop some green beans in the microwave and we will serve this over rice with some additional peanuts. If you have green onions or cilantro, that would also be really good. We just don't have any of those, but I think this will be super good. Let's plate it up. I tasted it and it honestly needed something more. So I added probably a fourth teaspoon of salt and then I added in probably another tablespoon of the brown sugar, a few more tablespoons of the water and then two more teaspoons of, and two more teaspoons of the soy sauce. And now I feel like it has better flavor. So let's dish it up now. The sauce did come out a little thick on this one, so I'll definitely be tweaking the recipe, but both my husband and I really liked this, so we'll definitely be making it again in the future. For tonight's dinner, we're going to have a Hawaiian barbecue chicken crock pot meal. Here are the ingredients, and this one's super easy. We'll just put our chicken thighs in the crock pot, pour as much of the baby ray's sauce on top, add some of the chopped onion, probably about three or so tablespoons of 
pineapple juice. And then we don't really like cooked pineapple all that much. So I just added a few, but you could definitely add more if that is your thing. And then I covered this up and cooked it on high for about two hours. And then I turned it down to low for an additional two hours. I did get this started a little bit late. So if you wanted to do low and slow for about six to eight hours, it will cook just fine. I made sure to stir the ingredients around a few times throughout the day just because my chicken was still a little bit frozen in the middle when I put it in. Here is what the chicken is looking like and now. I'm gonna shred it up and then we'll serve it over some rice. You could definitely add some green onions, some fresh pineapple on top, or really any other topping that you think would be good with this, but here's what it looks like. And this one was really good and it was so easy to make, so we'll definitely be making this one again. I cooked up a bunch of ground pork that I got on clearance at Winko the other day. So I was thinking for tonight's dinner, we would do our favorite pork and potato casserole. And I know I showed this recently in a video, but figured we'd add it in here because this is going to be one of the no spend meals for this week as well. I had pre-chopped an onion from the recipe that I did yesterday. And then I'm going to wash these up, slice them very thinly, and then we'll get them all cooking. I put my thinly sliced potatoes in some boiling water and I'm gonna let these boil for about five minutes. While the potatoes are boiling, I'm going to saute some onions and about three tablespoons of butter. I got out the rest of my ingredients, which are flour, the ground pork, and the cheddar cheese. And once the onions were nice and translucent and cooked fully, I went ahead and added in a fourth cup of flour and let that cook together for about a minute. I next added in a cup of milk mixed with a cup of the potato water. I had this sit on the counter for a few minutes before adding it into the hot pan. That way the milk didn't scald. I added in some Italian seasoning, onion powder, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. I'll go ahead and have the measurements in the description box below. Once all of this got a little bit thick, then I added in about a half cup of shredded cheese and stirred it around until it looked well combined. And then I added in my ground pork, gave all of that a good stir. Once all that was combined, I added in the potatoes and repeated that step, just stirring to make sure everything was covered with the delicious cheesy sauce. I also added some additional salt and pepper just because potatoes can use and take a lot of seasoning before it becomes too salty. So I added that here and then I had my oven preheating to 375 degrees. So that was ready to go. I sprayed my pan and dumped the casserole ingredients into the 9x13 pan. I topped the casserole with some additional cheddar cheese and then covered this with some aluminum foil and put it into the oven at 375 degrees for about a half hour. And while that was cooking, I put all of my extra ground pork into little freezer bags. That way we could pull those out for quicker dinners later. After the half hour, I took off the aluminum foil and put it back in for about seven minutes just so that cheese on top could get nice and crispy and bubbly. This is one of our favorite casseroles and I'm really looking forward to being able to make it again in the future with the ground pork that we already have on hand. For tonight we're going to do our beef and barley soup. Let me show you how we cook it. Our meat's just thawing out right there. We have some carrots, some potatoes, onion, finally use up some of the garlic from the mailbox kits and then we have a whole bunch of celery i'm going to chop what i need for the soup and then also chop a bunch to put in the freezer let's get it all chopped up i added about a tablespoon of oil to my instant pot and once the oil was hot i went ahead and added in my meat i was trying to avoid getting any of the juices the blood in there did get a little bit but that's okay we added all of that in and I gave everything a good seasoning of salt and pepper. I also stirred things around to make sure that everything got an even coat of the salt and pepper. I let this brown for a few minutes before adding an additional seasoning of onion powder and garlic powder and I really just eyeballed everything till it looked like it had enough seasoning. Now it's time to add in the veggies. So I added in 
one medium sized onion that was finely diced in my mini food processor. I believe I have this one linked down below. It's one of my favorite kitchen tools. I had also blended up about six cloves of garlic with the onions just to make sure everything was finely diced. I let this saute together while the meat was finishing cooking and I just waited until everything looked like it was fully cooked and was fragrant and then I went ahead and added in seven cups of water. You can definitely add in six cups of beef broth and then one cup of water or you can do bouillon powder or bouillon paste. I'm using a bouillon powder for six cups. So I'm going to do six teaspoons of that broth based powder and we're going to add that into the pot and give everything a good stir to make sure that dissolves. I'm next adding in about a cup of carrots. I again use my mini food processor to chop those. For the potatoes, you can definitely grate them and then put them in at the end and just turn it on saute for a few minutes, but we like the bigger chunks of potatoes, so I just did that and added those to the pot. I next added in two ribs of celery chopped into small pieces. And then I added two bay leaves, about a half teaspoon of dried thyme, and then I salted and peppered the entire soup. I honestly just eyeball this, and if we need more, we add it when we're at the table. And then you're supposed to add about two-thirds cup of pearl barley. I had about that much left, but I really wanted to use the rest of this package, so I went ahead and dumped that in. I gave everything a really good stir just to make sure all the barley was covered by the broth, and then I put my Instant Pot lid on, made sure it was on ceiling, and cooked this on high or the manual pressure or manual button, whatever it is on your Instant Pot for about 14 minutes. And while the soup's cleaning, we're gonna clean the rest of the celery, chop it up and put it in some freezer bags. Now I have six pre-portioned packages of celery to pop in the freezer and we can pull out for future soups and other dinners for our family. I let the Instant Pot naturally release for a few minutes and then I covered it with a cloth to let out the rest of the steam. And this is what the completed soup looks like. This one was really good. I like adding in some bread just to dip with. So we had some of that to go along with this dinner and it was delicious. This is one of our favorite soups. You definitely need to try it out. Tonight we are having what we called puffy pancakes at my house, Swedish pancakes, German pancakes, Lots of different names. This is the first recipe I ever learned how to make by myself and I started making these when I was about 10. Um, so here are all the ingredients and we're gonna make some tonight for dinner. While the oven is preheating to 400 degrees, I'm gonna put my butter in, it's just half a stick and we'll get that preheated and the butter melted while we mix up the batter. I'm gonna add all of my wet ingredients to this bowl first. So I have two eggs and then we're gonna do a half cup of milk. A little bit of this vanilla. This is actual vanilla, so we're going to be very sparing on that. We'll do a little bit of the salt and some cinnamon as well, and we'll get that going. Here is the recipe. This was from my grandma, and it's in this recipe book that she made for my mom, I think, when she either went to college or when she got married. So anyways, we had this a lot growing up, and it just brings back a lot of nice memories. I added in all the wet ingredients and the spices. Then a half cup of flour. And we're gonna stir, wanna help? Stir. I had a little kitchen helper with me today. And so I finished stirring this and poured it into the eight by eight pan. You can easily double this recipe and put it into a nine by 13 if you're needing to feed more people. If you've been watching my grocery haul videos, you know how much bacon we have. So we're gonna have some of that to go with the pancakes. We just pop ours in the microwave for the number of minutes of slices. So we have four slices, so we'll just do four minutes. And then if we want it crisper, we'll put it back in for a little bit of time. My favorite thing about making puffy pancakes is seeing what it looks like when it's done. It never looks the same when you make it. And so this one looked extra good, really crispy edges. So I was very excited to dig into this. 
And luckily, the toddler also likes these, so we will be making these more often in the future for sure. That is all I have for you guys today. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, please give this video a like and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos that I make here on my channel. And I hope you have the best rest of your day. Bye!